Welcome to Badger Watch, episode three now, I think, which is really exciting. So this is the podcast where we talk about all things county championship cricket, led mainly by the discussions through us playing cricket11.com, the fancy cricket website run by we don't know who, but we will find that out very soon and we will we, try and get them on. We found them on Twitter. We have found them on Twitter. So watch this space, cricket11.com. Mm. We've each got our own team. And um, we're currently 75th in the rankings. Chev, how many teams did you find out that there are in? I'm not, I'm not sure about teams. I know there's an, at least another 74 leagues uh, being played above us. So if we go through through it, my team, Spanish champs, are coming thoroughly last on 2,950 points. Bears Badgers, Harry's team, are coming third on 4,600 and a bit of a jump up to Brian May, Save the Badgers, huge team, on 5,183 points. Sorry, sorry to jump in here. A, a bit of a jump up to third, 500 points. How, how much were you, off, <laughs> were you off third, which wasn't deemed a bit of a jump? I think that's a chasm. That's a grand canyon of difference. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> and, maybe, uh, maybe we'll have to have discussions a bit like they have in the Six Nations about Italy. You know, do we need a relegation? <laughs> if it carries on like this, we might have to, we might have to chuck him out at the summer break. And uh, I'll just finish that league table. Uh, Chivalier is coming first in 6,598 points. So yes, the biggest deficit is from third to fourth. Yeah, embarrassing for me. I got Double the points this week than I did last week on, it wasn't quite double, but 769 points, which is not great. Where did everyone else's points come from this week? Batters, bowlers, all-rounders? Sean Masu. Yeah, the Sean Masu crew cleaned up again. He's been in unbelievable form, hasn't he? I it, think, it, I think it, this it, league table is split between our, our Derbyshire batsmen, Ben, because you and I in third and fourth place <laughs> went to Billy Godelman. <laughs> and Hugh and Chev in first and second went for Sean Massoud, and that and that small differential is probably probably about two thousand points difference between between those two players. You you are a man of your word though, Howard. You did say on I think our first episode, mm, but Sean Massoud's not a great not got a great record in England. Um, do you still stand by those comments? Yeah, he's, he's proving me wrong, isn't he? he <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think he did prior to coming over here. This is first in in the Champo, isn't it? Um, yeah. I, I remember he got 100 against us in one tour, but uh, prior to that, his record in England was terrible. But your comment of, I think you said he was first name on the team sheet, which is what I really took offence to, but actually he should well have been. <laughs> yeah, I think the interesting thing actually in this game is they put value on players and you actually they actually go up and down during the season based on their performance. And Billy Godelman has gone down £5,200. I don't know what Sharma Sue's gone up. Does anyone know? Let me tell you, yeah, sorry, 23,000 you know, nicker. Sorry, Chad. Exactly. Sorry. Yeah, that's no, fine. Yeah. I was just looking up, actually, the um, the difference between the, the points scored between the two of them. Um, Masood is on 1,346, uh, whereas Godelman, the, 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 fa- the favourites from our third and fourth uh, in the league, is 69. <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite a big delta, isn't it? I've done a lot of chopping and changing as well, which hasn't fared well for me. We are just currently just looking at players as well. Yeah, Sean Masood was the top scoring player for round three, along with Hannon, Burgess, Slater and Brown. That's Masood on 513 points and then Brown at the bottom of 455. Did we, did we have any of those other names across us? I didn't, I didn't see anyone going for Bahannon. No, I didn't go for him. I... <laughs> Nearly Brown about. looks expensive as well. He's late 80,000s when you've got folks in the low 70s. It seems expensive to go for Brown ahead of folks. I thought Burgess also was a bit of a flash in the pan, personally, mm. from, from, from his in the last, season, last round's innings. I he hasn't really like had a consistent run of runs in the county championship. He's in 270s this year, which you can't yeah. argue with. And both scored a pretty good lick as well. Absolutely. And then Masood is the top scoring player of all time at the moment for the county championship, not of all time, but of this season. Yeah, he's on 1,346 points. And Burgess is second in 952. And, and Burgess, I mean, it's astonishing the story there, as far as I can see it. I don't know the ins and outs, but from the outside, it looks like Alex Davies left Lancashire to go and keep for Warwickshire, as if Warwickshire had concerns about Burgess. Davies misses the first game of the season through a suspension. Burgess scores 170, Davis plays as a batter. And uh, you'd, you'd 
he'd have to drop a lot of catches as Burgess to be having the gloves taken off him at this stage. Yeah, I mean, David did score 60, didn't he, opening up in that mm. game? Um, but so, I mean, yeah, presumably he's going to play as a batter moving forward. But then they've got a they've got an opening pair that looks set for the season and, well, you're thinking Sibley and Yates. Well, yes, maybe, maybe Davis opens and Yates bats at three. That's what he did that game, yeah, because Rhodes was normally opening a couple of seasons ago and he's down at five. It's a good top. That's a good top. Davis, Subley, Yates, Hayne, Rhodes. They suddenly look a good side, don't they? Yeah, they do. Mind you, we'll, we'll say they look like they're going to be up there for the title this year and they'll lose this week, obviously. Yeah. They seem to get anything off Surrey this year, so they must be fairly decent. <laughs> And just a word in that game, I know we I bigged him up in the very first episode, but um, Liam Norwell has retired injured in Warwick's first innings. So. <laughs> Injury. <laughs> yeah, so that's interesting from Burgess. I think, like, at the moment, you know, Folks is going pretty well, isn't he, anyway, for Surrey in terms of runs scored. I think he averages, isn't he averaging over 100 at the moment, Ben Folks? I don't know about that. He's got, he's got 100 in the first game. He's not had a failure yet. I think he was 70 odd in the second fit or 45 in the second fixture and then 70 odd this week, something like that. Um, uh, and then a, a good second innings as well from him to, to bring the game home. Yeah, because so, looking at it, there's a lot of high scoring wicket keepers, of which obviously Burgess, Bracey, Brown, and Folks are very high scoring, which is interesting generally, I think, because for you say Folks has got the gloves at the moment, hasn't he, for the England team? But I wouldn't say two innings from Burgess is meaning that he gets a look mm. in. But it's an interesting sort of the keeping job for England has been open for a while. So any any keeper in the county championship getting runs like they all are at the moment is is a good thing, I think. Yeah, I think it's Burgess is still a long way down that particular pecking order, isn't it? It's going to take a, at least a full season to, to get him on a tour. England have had an embarrassment of riches in the wicket-keeping department, although none of them seem to be able to, to take that form to, to test level and really nail down a spot. But I think Folks is the, the man in possession. I think last summer was probably the time that Folks should have kicked on and made that spot his own, but he didn't have a good year with the bat. Mm. which would have cost him, but um, it's a promising start to the season from him, and if he can take that Classic form into, into test level then. I think he is probably a man that can take the gloves ring for a few years. Did, did folks have an injury last summer? Am I imagining that? That meant he missed the first test and then they just gave Butler another summer? No, they gave Bracey the gloves. I think Bracey was meant to come in at three that series and then folks keep. And then folks like tripped over and did his hamstring yeah, in the change. Exactly yeah, We had spikes on a tiled floor, didn't we? She should be banned. Uh, yeah, and then and then Bracey obviously came in number seven, kept and had a really torrid time. It'd be interesting. That spot, I think, is is definitely folks's, but it'd be interesting. Just It's really good to see, I think, generally the level of keeper batters in the county championship. It's sort of back to what it probably used to be at that sort of keeper batters in that Russell Stewart era, because you had, uh, you know, in that era, you had people like Warren Hegg and there were some genuine contenders. The Keith Piper for the gloves and sort of the, the, the keeper batter to me is a stalwart of like the county championship game. They're always the guys who have been in the club for the longest and stuff like that. It's quite a traditional position in a club. So it's good to see that. But Chev, like you true keeper, Spin. Yeah, I, that is coming from the keeper's union. I yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep a badger. Oh, they, and not to Chev, actually, who is coming fifth in the top overall teams. Chev, tell us, just keep going with your secrets. Who, who are your top scoring te- uh, your members at the moment? Um, well, I just put, I, I popped them in in the list just now. I, I actually focused on increasing my um, available cash a little bit uh, this week uh, with the, uh, the changes in value coming in uh, for this round. So I uh, was able to pick up, uh, I think, about just over 100k uh, increase in um, so I can spend a bit more in the, in the coming weeks. You know what, it's easy to be the directors of cricket positions. Look no further than this man. Just uh, <laughs> take a business attitude to everything. Forget the form, forget the player. Just maximise your cash. Keep a bit of free well, cash flow. Money in the kit. Cash is king. Here he goes. Well, I would say um, uh, clearly they are form players. Otherwise, otherwise their value wouldn't go up. I mean, if you'd picked uh, if you'd picked um, Darren Stevens, you, you would have. Uh, Lost some money in the in the last round, so there you go. So I think it's definitely worth it in terms of players that did well. I was looking at the at the list overall. I think out of the the, the ten uh, top scoring players, I've got eight in my team at the moment. Uh, It'll be Burgess just this week for you, Jeff. I am considering it, but probably not. <laughs> <laughs> no. The only the only real area of concern is really your rounders, where. 
none of them seem to be really performing consistently. Um, I think there's a there's a lack of all rounders in the all rounder pool. I think there's a lot of players who are like Craig Overton's labelled a bowler, mm -hmm. slim pickings in the all rounder category. Yeah. So I'm sort of it was sort of what it made me roll the dice um, this week with my all rounders. Yeah. yeah, I stuck with Richley this week, but obviously he's not doing much anymore at Essex just because Essex are maybe not doing much, but um, and mostly because um, your, your your big mate is back into play. Um, so yeah, I think it's that that's a bit of a shame. He had a really good first game, but that's basically where it all ended for him. So uh, if there's one player to be traded out this week, it's him. When you say it all ended, we're, we're still in April. Yeah, correct. <laughs> So, Chev, with your clear like financial analysis of this uh, tournament, when do you expect to run out of transfers? <laughs> How many is it that we get for the season? Oh, I want to say 28. 28. Uh, 28. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 28. Four per round. So you can do four around 28 trades for the season. But you, you, also, you obviously get four subs, so you, a sub doesn't count as a trade, so you can sub people in and out. But... For if you make four trades around, you'll you'll run out of trades in seven rounds. Yeah, exactly. And, and how many rounds of round. championship are there? Quick uh, math. Fourteen. Plus the final. Is it still a final or are we not doing it anymore? I don't know if they're doing, doing it. Not the Bob Willis. Now we're back in two divisions. Back back to two divisions. Any any surprising results from the from the round this time? Um there's a lot I'm of draws. Looking at the, the manner of the results as much as anything, there were nine games. We had six innings victories, one 10 wicket yeah. victory. So seven out of nine games have been pretty much a thumping. Then there's just been one relatively close game or very close game at, at the Oval and, and one draw where um, I think, was it North Hans clung on against Yorkshire, I think? Um, mm, against Yorkshire. And with that Yorkshire attack, you'd sort of expected them in 120 overs to bowl out North Hans. Mm. That's a fantastic effort because I mean, North Hans have been promoted, not seen as a deep pocketed club and they've managed to um they've managed to bat that out they've got young yeah will like, young, will young yeah. Um, kiwi yeah yeah he'll be evergreen lol um oh no someone had to make it rob right? keo manis and then kelly at the end got a few runs did anyone see gareth Burr got got um yeah yeah i enjoyed that i don't think we can uh, i don't know if this goes out before the watershed whether we can uh, re repeat what, what they said to him does anyone know? I think am I setting myself up for a failure here? The international cricket cricket team that he plays for. He's yeah. Italian, isn't he? Yeah, he plays for Italy, <laughs> which is unbelievable. Um, is he still playing? Um, plays for Italy and Northampton. What yeah. a great gig that is! Just to swan off on international duty for bucket loads of pasta and pizza and pepperoni. Oh, believe me, not the stereotype. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a phenomenal. That's actually a phenomenal for all that. I mean, McManus is paying dividends there for their loan deal, sixty-two. And then who bowled for for York? Yeah, York. I mean, Yorkshire's bowling attack though actually is is it is it depleted? Thompson, Ralph, Pass, and Bess. They were without Fisher this week. I'm not sure what happened to him. He's, he's injured. Is he injured? He's injured. Yeah, and he's out for a little while, I think. And then the other the other lad on um for Yorkshire that we that we I think where we talk about on you on, on WhatsApp is Hill. Where's this lad, George Hill? Does anyone know much about him? 150? Uh, I found a bit out about him, but I sort of picked it by accident. I was, we were just saying about the shortage of all-rounders. He was in there relatively cheap, at, I think about 40k. Um, and Yorkshire trust him to bat three, or yeah. have done in the last game. So I, I figured that if Yorkshire think he's good enough to bat three, he's probably not that bad a player. And maybe got a little bit lucky when he walloped 150 red. So you had him in your team, did you? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, no, he went all right. Although, although he was at the expense of Tom Abel, and uh, Tom Abel also uh, also got 150 yeah. big ones. So you know, we I, I said I was going to take him out. I took him out, and we royally reversed. Chebbed him into some form. He was the most traded out player from the first two rounds as well. 67 yeah. others um, who who made the same call as me. Just looking at the tables here um, and looking at one of the sort of a big win for Worcestershire was, you know, Sussex getting bowled out. Worcestershire got 491. Sussex bowled out for 269 and 188. They've got a bit of a bowling crisis, haven't they? Sussex. They've got no they depth. Look a, they look a young attack, don't yeah. they? 
Does anyone know what's going on there? Because obviously I think we've spoken about it a little bit in that they're a traditional sort of, whether or not they've just been on TV more than other clubs, I don't know, but like they seem to be a biggish club in what they do and, you know, what's going on there and their sort of... Their I think they've been, on, they've been on TV a lot in the last few years because their one-day bowling attack was Archer, Jordan, Mills, Rashid. And right. That's, that, sells, that sells Sky subscriptions, I think. As I understand it, Rob Andrew has cleared out some of the, or, or allowed some of the older players like Ben Brown to go, mm. um, and Jordan brought in Steve Finn and um, and some some high quality overseas on paper and Pujar and Rizwan. That would be Rizwan's had a tough start. Yeah, um, and they clearly look like they're backing a young squad. The, yeah, I was going to say the problems go back to, to last year as well. I think I think the the draw they got last week where they batted out the final day broke a run of something like seven consecutive defeats they're back to an innings defeat now so I think it's eight eight losses and a draw in the last nine first class games or, or something like that um so it was this for for what you'd think certainly the batting lineup on paper relatively strong they're they are struggling at the moment you look at that bowling attack it, they brought in Grant Stewart from Kent the sort of Australian born seamer and then Croker Atkins and Burrows doesn't strike fear into the heart of uh, of opposition batters, I dare say. Yeah, because that top order of Orr, Haynes, Orr, Sot, Pajara, Clark, Rizwan, and then Rawlins, yeah, that's not a bad batting lineup, is it, for a county championship team? You'd say they're all pretty well seasoned or, or young, young seasoned pros, wouldn't you? Well, I suppose, I suppose Orr and Haynes are, are young. I think they're probably both under 25. They're not. I wouldn't say they're necessarily experienced. Um, they played, played enough cricket to have been yeah. able as good, good pros. Yeah, of, I agree. Got, got a good future. Then on the other side of the table, in the bottom of the Div One, is Somerset. Is that a surprising turn of events for Somerset coming bottom of Div One? Very similar story. I think that was their their seventh consecutive first class loss. So is again, that right? Yeah, going back to back into last year, considering where they were less well, eighteen months ago, really. Bob Willis Trophy final. I, I would well certainly one of the best bowling attacks on paper in in the in Dip One. Mm. Um, I think that is a surprise that that they've they've started as they have done. The, conversely to, to Sussex, I think the batting looks weak there, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I mean, does it look? Yeah, I suppose Renshaw, Lamanby, um, Abel, Banton, Hildreth, Davis. Oh, Hildreth is quite low there. Davis, Overton. Yeah, Overton's high there, isn't he? Davies at six, Overton at seven. Yeah. Davies can still play, but I don't know. He must be pushing 40 if he's not already. Dave, oh, I think he's mid-30s, I think, Davies. Is he? I mean, Leach, Leach yeah. is at one, two, three, four, four. Leach I, thought, I thought it was interesting that Leach only bowled 11 overs in the run chase at the Oval. Um, in, in the best part of 70 overs, in the last innings at the Oval, you'd, you'd hope your spinner might feature a bit more. Maybe... Maybe there was a bit of grass on it and it, it didn't quite suit the spinner. But I was slightly surprised not to see a bit more of Leach involved from England's premier spinner on day four at the Oval. Yeah, that is interesting. Did you guys, Howard or um, che- Chev, you obviously didn't because you're in Holland. How did you get down to the Oval? Saturday morning um, for a bit this week. But didn't see any of the final day. Yeah, that is interesting. I mean, even Renshaw bowled two overs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Saw a little bit of Sam Curran, who uh, he would have taken great delight in failing to reach his maiden first class hundred again, having got to having got to eighty. Yeah, but then he didn't bowl in the second innings. Is he is he not fit or what's going on there? I just think he's overrated. I know he's it, he's he's frustrating. I think he's he still plays like he's a seventeen year old kid with nothing to lose at times. Whereas now he's played enough cricket to actually you need to someone needs to sit him down and say I don't think he's going to be a quality bats uh, sorry a quality bowler. I don't think he's quick enough to to trouble at test level. Mm. Um, so I think he needs to really work on his batting if that's if that's where. Yeah, he's I was going to say. Do you think he needs to work out what he is for Surrey? before he then works out what he is for England. You know, he's he opens in the IPL for some teams. He bats all over the shop for Surrey. He's not even, you know, in their... Is he is he bowling in their first bowling attack, in their premier bowling attack, if they've got everyone fit? He probably is, but not not definitely. He seems a bit sort of lost well, in Surrey as well as the England sort of what his role is, basically. I think looking at that game, objectively, as a non-Surrey fan, he's taken the new ball in the first innings, but only bowled 10 overs, where the other seamers have bowled 20 plus. Yeah. Then he's got 80 in the in the first innings with the bat. He's not bowled in the second innings, presumably injured. You have got another left armour in Topley, 
who's a pitched up swing bowler in first class cricket as a left armour. And then he's come in at six in the chase and he's got a run of all 33 with two bombs and he's got out needing what can only be about 20 to go and mm-hmm. caused a little mini collapse. Yeah, he did. Which, yeah. which actually could have, which actually could have cost them, cost them the game on another day um, if folks gets out. So I don't know. It's, it's the curious case, Sam Curran. Yeah, I agree. He certainly won't be in my fantasy team. I've not made that clear. <laughs> if we go further down south into Kent, Hampshire, that is another big, like we said, there's a lot of wind buying innings, and this was a big one. Hampshire's middle order in their second inning. So Kent got 305 all out, I think, in their first innings. Not too bad. Bell Drummond with 149. That's pretty good. And then Hampshire come in at 652 for six. In the middle order, well, Govan's got 69, then Vince goes 111, Dawson 171, and Brown 157. And then Organ and Barker both come in and get 44 each. Not only is it flat, you would suggest, but obviously James Vince has converted to 100, future England captain. What are the odds on him? I think he was third favourite when we <laughs> he was. Um, Dawson was a big one. I mean, Dawson's, again, Dawson talking about bit part cricketers. I mean, Dawson is always traditionally one of those who has played, obviously, for his World Cup winner with England, don't forget. Um, does he bowl every week? Does he bat? He, he's batting sort of middle order. I think he's a he's a good cricketer, isn't he? But, I mean, 171. He's a good championship cricketer, isn't he? I think. He's, a, he's a really good championship cricketer. Yeah, I, I actually played against him once in a Cotswold Cricket League game and he opened the bowling, opened the batting and the club's clubhouse was... Also doubled up as the town hall for the village, and he was he was there like just <laughs> played for them ever since he was a junior and just went back and played. He's incredible, but yeah, he is. I mean, England tried him out a few times, didn't they? I mean, I watched him against Africa. And he was basically bowling medium pace. I think he was so nervous he was just throwing it down mm-hmm. as he could. But is he? He's obviously classed as an rounder in the game. Has anyone? No one's got him in their team. Yeah, I've had, I've had yeah. him since the first week. In- he hadn't done a lot for the first two games, but did well to stick with him. Hasn't been bowling a lot with with Hampshire's seam attack. He hasn't had much go with the ball. Hasn't got many wickets at all this year, but nice to see him get a score. You, you do look at the card from the, the last innings where they're trying to bowl Kent out and the seam has bowled 16, 17 each. Les Dawson bowls 10. Mason Crane only bowls 12, but Felix Organ, the youngster, I think he's only 19, 20, 21. The offie bowled 24 overs, took three for including the worst decision ever given. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you've seen that on social media doing the rounds. Jordan Cox. Jordan Cox kicking it to the short leg and a half hearted appeal. I'd like to know whether he was given out court or LBW. I mean, you, they, were, they were both as far away from out as you can be, but. Well, I'll tell you, I'm looking at the card. They half-hearted. Ben Brown went up big time behind the sticks. He's jumping. Yeah, massive. He did, yeah. He's gone up. <laughs> I was looking. I was looking at leg slip. He did this. Put their hands on the head, sort of in, sort of in, in appeal, and uh, appreciate we're on a podcast, so my actions probably might not going to be uh, <laughs> too well translated. But yeah, it, it didn't really look that much from uh, leg slip or short leg. But there we are. The interesting thing for me with um, Kent is you've got their club captain, I think, is still Sam Billings, and yet captain wicket keeping in this game is Ollie Robinson. Sam Billings is an England wicketkeeper, technically. Maybe on course for being England captain, as we've seen from the odds. It was, yeah. yeah, what's happening there? And, he gets and, kept, and kept in the test match in the winter. But yeah. last last summer when he played for Kent, I think Robinson kept the gloves and Billings uh, fielded in the office. So unusual. That, but I, I like Robinson as a as a cricketer. I think there's a lot to him. I think I he's there is. In, in another generation, if we didn't have a, a million extraordinary wicketkeeper batters, I think he'd be pushing for higher honours at some stage. Just it's just interesting when Billings gets back from the IPL, presumably he probably won't play much cancer cricket. I don't know, but it's just interesting dynamic well, that your club captain comes back and sort of Robinson, what does he do? Does he does it obviously doesn't captain, does he keep I don't know. It's just it seems like an odd call from Kent. Maybe it's not an odd call from Kent, but it seems a bit weird that he's Sort of Plus, a you want your club captain to be a club man playing, don't you? Really? That is true. And, and he's not, and he's going to be. I think. I think he's captaining Oval Invincibles again in the hundred this summer. Um, so they obviously rate him as a 
as a captain, as a leader. But um, yeah, how much championship cricket he'll play for Kent, maybe a few games at the end of the season, but he's not going to be around much before that. Does anyone know much about um, Tawanda Mayeye? Just, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but sorry if I'm not. Um, uh, I heard him in my team, trading him out, obviously. Um, and he was extremely cheap. So I put him in nearly as a burner almost uh, on the bench. Um, uh, so I could spend a bit more on, on, other, on other players. He got tipped off about someone else. He was actually pretty much the same value, but doing a lot better. Oh, interesting. Um, on his Wikipedia page, he is a Zimbabwean-born professional cricketer playing for Kent. Um, looks like he went to Eastbourne College or Eastbourne School and signed for Kent this year as a as a non-overseas. I think interesting. Batting at, he's batting oh, at four. I think I think now in the days that there is cricket being covered by TV cameras at pretty much every level, I'm pretty sure there was a package of his shots that went viral playing for Eastbourne. And he just looked like an absolute world beater. Really? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was him. And then ended up playing a few twos games at the age of 60, 16, 17, something like that. And has then got a pro deal, I think. I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. So to sum up, just to sum up the Div 1 table at the moment, Surrey on top on 56 points. Well done, Chervin. Won't, won't last, will it? All right, well done. Played three, one, two, drawn one, so they haven't lost yet. And then Somerset at the bottom on 10 points. And then Division Two is Nottinghamshire, probably maybe no surprises, 52 points. And then Sussex, as we talked about, a little bit of a surprise at eight, so it's coming last. Can there be, is there a big movement on in the, the way the points are set up in the county championship? You know, a couple of wins, then skyrockets you from second bottom to top. Yeah, I mean, they really, they really reward the win, don't they? So um, I can't remember who's in second. Is it Lancashire and did one? No, sorry, Hampshire, Lancashire. 56 points, 49, 46. And then... So Lancashire have only played two, is that right? That's right, yeah, so exactly. I think they're, they're only uh, not very far behind, sorry, but with a game in hand. So um, the, the, the win is very valuable. So yeah, you string a few victories together rather than um, a, a few draws can hurt you, even though you're not losing games, it can, it can set you back. And I guess that's why a lot of teams roll the dice with pitchers. Somerset for the last 10 years have been playing on, and Essex, to my shame, have been playing on green spitting cobras where bowlers hitting, hit, hitting a length and letting the seam do the work have been rewarded. Perhaps, perhaps this year, maybe it's a different batch of balls, maybe it was a dry winter, um, the pitchers do look flatter. Mm. What do they call Taunton sometimes? Cider or bad? Yeah. Hyderabad, yeah. Because of the spinning nature of the wicket, it's like Hyderabad, obviously. Um, so I've just done a little, I did a little bit of research on the first three rounds. Obviously, the England players are not, well, not all England players, century contract players are playing. So there's a big sort of like caveat to that. But if we were to pick a, an England 11 for Rob Key um, for the first test match based on cricket11.com points, if that was based on the points, actually, Rob Key wouldn't be in a job like we've said, and Chev would be managing director of England cricket. Um, but we've got, I've put together an 11. How do we think this 11 would go against New Zealand in the first test? Haynes on 906 points, opening with Compton on 906 points. Bracey without the gloves on 774 points at number three. Dolavira on 602 points at number four. Brooks, 667 points. Higgins as the all-rounder on 708 points. Burgess, 952 keeping. Spinner between Dawson at 572 and Alex Thompson of Derbyshire at 474 points at number eight. The caveat to that is that Dawson is um, got most of his points for his runs this week. So I think Thompson takes the spinning option. Has he got more points than Patterson White? That surprises me. Yeah, he has actually, Thompson. Interesting. Yeah. Barker... 708 points, batting at number nine, with 10 and 11 being Patterson White at 785 and Overton at 547. Sorry, that's a, you're all right there. Foxy behaviour for me. Back, Patterson White at number 10 and Overton at 547. So actually there, it looks like maybe we're a fast bowler light, possibly. Because Patterson White's a spinner, isn't he? Left armers, yeah. I actually thought he was a medium pacer, which is why I put him in this team. Are you thinking of Dwayne Paterson? Possibly. The uh, South African. And I did even scribble in my notes for today, Nottinghamshire's attack is a commentator's nightmare of Paterson, Pattinson and Patterson White. Yeah, absolutely. So that's Foxy behaviour. It's a mouthful. Of, for the benefit of uh, 
new listeners, or actually even. Or do you want to do you want to read it out again? Well, Foxy Behaviour can just edit it out. Uh, yeah, exactly. We should do. Yeah, we'll leave it. We'll leave it in. But Fo- Foxy Behaviour, basically, for everyone, <laughs> the fact that you have gone directly against being a badger and have said something that is not very badger-like, and you've misquoted or you have got something drastically wrong, like saying that Liam Patterson White is a medium pace bowler when he's a slow left armour. If we were to say that team, Haynes, Compton, Bracey, Dolivera, Brooke, Higgins, Burgess, Thompson, Barker, Patterson, White, Overton. Good 11 for England or probably not? Terrible. I'd say three of those might get international cricket this summer. And I would go for Haynes, Brooke and Overton. I think the rest think are a long way off. They've got to play at Somerset, haven't they? It's the only chance they've got on a gr- green green side or a bad wicket. I think that bowling tack needs needs a bit of help. But I think I think that probably is it the point system that owes to the to the sort of the journeyman cricketer, or is it the fact that the England players obviously aren't playing? But does that it, does that scream anything to you guys in terms of the future of England cricket or the next cabs off the rank? Maybe we don't think we're producing the county championship producing England players. Or well, I think that's a really interesting point. I think that. Whilst that team might not beat New Zealand at Lords, I, I think you look at some of the performances this round. You've got Ben Slater at Nottinghamshire, he scored a double hundred. Um, Bahannon scored a double hundred. Then hun- like big hundreds from George Hill, Burgess, Bell Drummond, Dawson, Brown, Dolavera. At a time when we've been crying out for batting, there was a lot of runs scored by English qualified players in this round. Mm. Vince scored a hundred. Uh, Ryan Patel at Surrey scored 100 in a fourth innings chasing, which I think carries a bit more weight of runs. Harry Brooks scored 150 in the match. George Hill got 150. I think there's there's potentially this round's given us calls for optimism as England fans, and I say that carefully as a big pessimist. Yeah, and I agree. It's great. It's great to see English bats from scoring runs. I think there's there's names there that you can discount from ever playing for England or getting international honours. I don't think. Brett Dolivera is going to get called up anytime soon. And it's, I mean, it's very early days in the season at the moment. One big score, one beginning can get you into that, that list of leading point scorers for the season. So let's have a look in, let's have a look in four, four rounds time. And if the same names are still up there, then maybe they need to be taken a bit more seriously. But I think we'll start to trend towards getting more established names or more very promising young players coming to the top of that particular side that you put together. Mm. Well, I think it would really be interesting would be Perhaps if we had done this earlier and looked at the England selections from the past three years and compared it to the points scored, maybe see if it Crawley would he have, would he be on the list? Was he on the list previously? Do we remember? Was he a big point scorer? Not huge. No. Don't get me started on Crawley. I saw his first innings dismissal on on the uh, on the highlights on social media, and I think he nicked off from eighth stump. It's incredibly depressing if he's the best we've got. Fourth favourite to be the next full-time captain, wasn't he, Zach? <laughs> Unbelievable. No comment. We talked a lot there about English qualified players. I think we've talked a lot in the last couple of episodes. It's been hard not to about Masood getting all of his points and runs, which sort of leads us nicely on to sort of the overseas cricketers and sort of the role that they're taking. And I think what we've noticed on the group that someone, you know, the, the couple of signings this season... Like Mohammed Amir at Gloucester for a couple of games. Going to Grondheim for three games. Grondheim for three games. I mean, my, sort of growing up watching, when I first started watching county cricket on the TV, you had Carl Hooper, you had um, you had a lot of players for people like, you know, basically where these people were embedded into the culture of the cricket club. Sort of like the overseas was part of the season. It was part of the furniture. They were loved. They got really stuck in and now sort of, the Grand Dame signing for three games, Amir signing for three games. You know, is the role of the overseas, what's it looking like at the moment in the county championship? I, I think there's there's two types, aren't there? You get the the ones that are using it for their own games. Like De Grand Dame's about to play a test series in June, so that he can have three county championship games in May is great preparation for him. So I, I think there's more international cricket and franchise cricket in the English mm. summer than there ever has been. So I think naturally to get the best players, they're often they're often conflicted with with other duties. What I've I've noticed this year though is that with the well, I, I don't think it's changed for this year, but compared to previous years, there are uh, 
I can think of at least seven or eight high quality Pakistani overseas players, whether that's because they're continually excluded from the IPL on bounds of grounds of nationality, I can only assume. Um, but in Rizwan, Shaheen Afridi, Hassan Ali, there's some high quality players playing in championship cricket, which if, if they're around for most of the summer, is, is only going to be good for our players being exposed to that. Yeah, true. I mean, who, you look back and sort of like, um, I always quite liked it when sort of you had a cricketer come in and they were young, you know, early 20s, overseas cricketers. I think Andrew Simons did it. Hussey did it quite famously, didn't he? Langer did it. Mm. We don't really seem to be signed, you know, counties don't really look to be going into sort of trying to find that sort of young lad who's up and coming, can learn his trade in England and actually really contribute to the team for a year. They're sort of signing. There are a couple, there are a couple of those. North are have signed Kelly from Western Australia. I'd say even as recently as Labuschagne, when he came across 2019, um, before he played that Ashes, I think he'd had a couple of couple of games for Australia, but only really played a test match because of Steve Smith's concussion. Um, he was piling on the runs for Glamorgan before that. Yeah, he seems to love Glamorgan, doesn't he? Like, I mean, obviously, maybe they're paying him well, but he seems to go back every single year, loves it. He, like, bucks the trend. Does, can he not get... He, an love, he loves cricket, doesn't he? He loves, loves cricket. cricket for the the man, doesn't he? At Glamorgan, he can go, he can bat, he can bowl his leggies, he can bowl his seam up, he can run <laughs> around and carry on all over the place. I think, it, I think that club probably suits him quite well to be the, the big name in the village. <laughs> it was a proper battle between him and Shaheen Shah Afridi from from what I've seen on uh, on the clips uh, doing the rounds this week. I mean, that's great for championship cricket, building up the profile with players like that doing battle like they did. I mean, Chev is someone a bit newer into watching cricket. Um, whether it's changed or not since you've started watching, I don't know. But do you do you see it as like a What's your take on it? Sort of like people coming in. Is it? Did you find it was an enticing thing that you know these players come in for a couple of games and and play? Does it make you watch more that you sort of know them from an international viewpoint? You know, I, I think. Oh, I think two things about it really is that it's really exciting for players to come in and actually uh, they raise the profile of a team or a, a club in particular. Um, and do that for the right reasons. As in, they, they're, they're probably contributing quite a lot to the setup there, even though it's for a very short t- term. I think that's just the nature of everything moving towards fr- a franchise attitude to almost any type of cricket that they play. Something that you, if you accept it and then take it to your advantage, which some of the teams are doing, it's it's probably going to benefit the players that you're trying to develop. At the same time, also not taking up spaces. Uh, for a whole season uh, where you should be developing your own players. And I think that's where uh, some clubs have got a slightly different attitudes towards developing uh, young players and, and giving them a chance. That is actually quite a good point. I mean, someone, someone like De Grantham coming in for three matches and Mayo coming in for three matches, can they really have that much? I mean, you're probably not signing them for the beneficial impact that your young lads are going to learn, you know, and then at the same time, do you think it's really, I'd like to see some, just maybe we should go into this if we had access to more stats, you know, people who have been at a club for less than five games, for example, I'd be very surprised if there's any performance benef- like impact on there. If, if it's beneficial to have them just for three games, you know, they come off the plane, they're in a new environment. They play one game, get used to it. They play, okay, they play another game, they get used to it. And then the third game, they probably don't care because they're on the plane the next week. I, I can't see how that's a particularly beneficial deal. And they have probably just wasted a load of money. The counties mm. have wasted a load of money paying them. I don't really understand it. And the interesting thing with DeGrand home, we're just like sort of the ECB are just allowing him to sort of get used to English conditions for three tech for three matches and then go off and probably skittle England's top order, which is not difficult. That, that happens every year, though. You know, particularly with an Ashes summer, suddenly the whole half the squads having a having a net. It was the last Ashes summer where there was more Australians who played Red Bull cricket in the UK than our own team had because they were playing in the World Cup. Absolutely, and then and then you know you look the the inverse of that is Australia. Mason Crane's the last person to play for as an overseas player as an Englishman since. I mean, I do Australia don't allow overseas. Do they allow overseas players? Well, they, they just don't really sort of encourage it. He was over there playing grade cricket, and by all accounts, took hundreds of wickets yeah. in in grade cricket, and got picked on merit as they pick people out of their system. It, it's 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 a much more merit based system, but they don't tend to in the modern era go for 
overseas players. That said, both of them played a bit for Queensland. Um, some of the West Indians in the 80s and 90s yeah. also played for, for Queensland. So, uh, it's really yeah. promising youngsters that go out there rather than the established internationals, doesn't it? I think the attitude in Australia is very much... When you go out, so Hugh and I, we've both been out to play for a little season when we were young, thinking we were guns, probably definitely not. But, you know, it was very much a case of when I was playing for the team, it was you, me as a young Englishman, you should be happy that you're playing in our team in Australia mm. and you should be thankful to us. When we yeah. get overseas at club cricket, it's, you know, thanks for coming. You're so, we're so grateful to have you. And even if they're rubbish, we sort of give them the sort of benefit the doubt that no oh, it's difficult to come over and stuff like that you know it's I think that's the difference in attitudes towards overseas players definitely in that respect maybe it's sort of maybe it doesn't translate upwards but I think there's a difference in standard though the <laughs> shield the shield sides bar probably Tasmania and South Australia are, are much much better than most of our county sides because there's only seven sides so I think the quality rises up and I think There'll be some Sydney grade sides that would probably do okay in Division Two, and and wouldn't wouldn't yeah. be that far away from. And so club cricket in Australia, and we are going off on a bit of a tangent, but club cricket in Australia is much better than club cricket over here. Mark Stoneman married to a Australian wife, and he goes and plays grade cricket in Sydney every year, and mm. is a I suppose he's he's like their equivalent of a jobbing pro. I suppose the difference also is Australia at the time when they were giving us, you know, Darren Lehman, Stuart Law, those overseas who played yeah. embedded themselves in counties. Yeah. They, they couldn't get in the test side, could they? Because they had such yeah. a strong side. So they've come over. They'd play every format. They'd earn good living and, and put roots down in these counties, like Darren Lehman. Is great. So do we know, I mean, I mean, the Pakistani cricketers who we've talked about, I mean, it's brilliant having them over and scoring all the runs and contributing all the wickets. Do you think... Is that a multi-year deal? Does anyone know, or is it a one-year deal per per season? And then, if they go well, they'll get them back. That sort of stuff. Does anyone know that? Well, I don't know, but I don't think there's many multi-year deals kicking around just because of the nature of international cricket as it is these days. You never know when you're going to be touring and where and what squad you're going to make. Whether you take three separate squads for three different international series. True. Um, so I would, I would, I would think they would just be single-year deals. Yeah, but Travis Head at Sussex had a multi-year deal, and then he had to pull out the second half of it because he got into the Australian side. Yeah, again, that must be tough signing a player as an overseas, and then suddenly he gets pulled out, and you spent all his marketing material on yeah. coming over to play, and then suddenly they're pulled because they've got injured in the IPL or they. Considering how Travis Head went last year, though, I imagine Sussex were quite pleased about that. <laughs> <laughs> Hugh, who's your favourite overseas player from the time you've been watching? Club cricket, county cricket. I mean, in recent times, obviously, I have a, a huge soft spot for um, yeah. for Simon Harmer. But before that, in, in the longer term, I used to absolutely love watching Andy Flower back at Chelmsford and Colchester as a kid. Yeah, is, yeah. He was he was he was short, and he used to play every type of sweep, and he was just brilliant to watch. Just whacked it. Anything spinners came on, you, you couldn't set a field. He had slog sweep, reverse sweep, paddle sweep, everything. Brilliant to watch. I think Carl Hooper. I just loved watching him play. Like he had the helmet with no grill. He sort of bowled a bit, batted a bit. I just I thought he was did he wear his thigh pad on the outside? Didn't wear a, no, he didn't wear a thigh pad. Oh, on, Famously yeah. didn't wear a thigh pad. I just thought it was too cool. I think he was pretty awesome. And then I think like I again, Darren Lee, I just used to love the fact that like these overseas would come over and just like do everything at the club. And so yeah, I thought it that is so cool. I remember reading The Cricketer as a uh, a tragic teenager, probably. 11, 12, 13, the Cricketer magazine. And um, Carl Hooper's got the fastest first class over on record in, <laughs> um, in a game where it was petering out into a draw. He bowled a 42 second over, <laughs> which is extraordinary. Seven <laughs> seconds a <of> ball. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Um, who is there with the stopwatch at every county game and like, how, how do these <laughs> well, statistics possibly get compiled it's, well if you're doing laptop scoring because we have it at our club with laptop scoring all the times are when they press the button so as soon as the scorer presses the last dot for the maiden I imagine it just gets timed at 42 seconds um, 
Mm. Um, right, moving on as well now, just to any changes in the 11? It's quite early in the week this week, isn't it? It's Tuesday. So are we any changes definitely for everyone or are we still going to deliberate on that later? I think, I, I think a, um, I'm not specific to players, but I think I need to shift a bit of cash out of the bowlers and into the batsmen because I think the same is probably true for most of us when went quite cash heavy on the bowlers, just traditionally April wickets, your bowlers tend to do better than the batters, but we've all come a bit unstuck on that this year. So I think I probably need to take some money out of some of the, the top end bowlers, like maybe likes of Sam Cook, Mohamed Abbas um, and Harris Ralph I put in, try and redirect that towards, uh, I'm keen to get Marnus in, much as I dislike him with his with his wicket taking ability as well. I think he's he's probably going to score a lot of points in the division. I love, I love what this game does to us. It makes us cool cricketers that we've never met in our lives by their first name we've all just mm. called them Arnus, <laughs> we, they're like our like our children our players aren't they i feel like i know sham masood after the last three weeks having willed him on to back-to-back doubles i think you're right harold i think the bowlers i didn't quite believe the amount of runs scored i, I thought it was it was too 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 good to be true so i haven't changed much but chair any changes well, yeah, probably an all-rounder for me because it's the one position I haven't really worked out yet. So um, it's the that's the area that I'm looking at for now. I think batsman-wise, I'm not doing too badly at no, the moment. No. So don't need to spend any more money on them for now. Uh, but yeah, we'll see if that changes. Probably just one, calm it down a little bit. Uh, and now we've, uh, we've got the first couple of rounds out of the way and then see what happens uh, after the weekend. Mm. Um, going for the last three or four rounds before the break. Good. How many, how many more first class fixtures have we got before we break? Anyone know? I think three or four. That many. Okay. Mm. Three or four rounds. In, towards yeah. the end of May that we we go into jazz hands. Into, into the into the summer break. Mm. <laughs> Maybe that's one for another. You know, fo- football has a winter break. Camps Championship cricket has a summer break. You know, one when it gets really hot and dry. On for another episode, I reckon that. Yes, Where the most miserable so. of badges go for a little summer hibernation. <laughs> <laughs> Six weeks uh, sleeping in the set whilst the fireworks go off. <laughs> yeah. I bought what, about, what about you, Spenny? Are you making any changes this week? Uh, You're the one asking all the questions, so we'll ask you. I can't see. I cannot see how... I you can't in, make four trades. I bought in, I, I'm, I've made two already. I can't see how Compton... No, I bought Compton in based on his runs, so I'm going to keep him in. I just cannot see how three of Godalman, Northeast, and Gubbins just basically haven't scored that many points. And I'm, still, I'm backing them because I think they're due. So I'm still backing them. I bought Mullaney in last round. He's one of those weird all-rounders who doesn't bowl, so is he an all-rounder? I've kept him in because he does score runs. And then I've bought in Thompson and... Um, don't laugh, but I think David Payne is fit for the seat for the next round because he had COVID, so I brought him in. Um, but I might sub out one of my batsmen for Eskenazi. He didn't play last game. I, don't, I think he had COVID. I don't know why. So I might sub him in if he doesn't, <laughs> if he if he is playing for one of Godelman, Northeast or Gubbins, I think. So yeah, all right then. So I think that probably concludes the episode. I reckon. I think next um, next couple of episodes, next three rounds, we'll definitely try and get a guest on. If it is Mr. Cricket Eleven.com himself, hopefully. If hopefully not, he's listening. He's found us. If not, there's a few irons in the fire in terms of scorers, groundsmen, or possibly commentators. So yeah, we'll keep that coming. But thank you very much for listening to another episode of Badger Watch. Not sponsored by cricket11.com but we wish it was um and yeah send us in your thoughts i don't think we have any social media yet but we'll get that up and running so you can dm us and tell us how bad our selections have been going so yeah thanks for listening see you next week